What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pixelist Podcast, a podcast about all nerdy things we love and enjoy. I realized that I let that intro run for way longer than I meant to, so <laughs> thanks for your patience. It's been um, 84 years. It's been a forever. <laughs> um, but welcome, Bro, you everybody. Just, you're just going to low-key throw in the reindeer? Bro, hey, I... <laughs> without, without the heads up? The reason huh? the audio intro went on so long is because I looked around my room and I saw this in the corner. It's been there since last year. Um, so it was not pre, it was not it, it premeditated. Was moment, I, I literally just of inspiration. saw inspiration. Yeah, the inspiration struck you and your poor, it's been there since last year. They were yeah. like, do you know how long I've been waiting I'm for this moment? Wearing it backwards too, apparently. Um, <laughs> got the Lloyd Christmas going now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, y'all, it's, uh, it's a lovely Thursday, the Thursday before Christmas. And uh, yep. excited to sit down. We're going to talk some of our bread and butter, a little critical mm-hmm. role. And then, mm-hmm. um, we've we've gone from ditch to ditch because we went heavy on the acronyms, and I I know both of us kind of shied away from dropping an acronym there because yeah. we talked about the bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, I I uh, you noticed that, huh? I intentionally. You know, I, well, I felt the same way. I the felt acronym. I was going to, then I thought eh, maybe I shouldn't. So I think I think you know we're it's better judgment now that we've <laughs> <laughs> now that we've tested and tried it. We were like, you know what? Why we do that? I'll be back to it. Don't worry. Next next week, I'll be back. Try it on again in the new year. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But yeah, y'all, we're going to be talking some Critical Role. Um, Again, it is Thursday, so we have a new episode of Critical Role tonight, and it is going to be the last episode of the year, um, which sounds worse than it is. I think there's only going to be a couple weeks before we're back with C3, but um, the first episode in January is going to be Candela Obscura, uh, chapter, Mm. chapter three, episode two, because it is getting shunted due to christmas and new year's just like it did mm-hmm. last week or last month for thanksgiving um so yeah uh what else um a couple of announcements um first we have our live show tomorrow um at 1 30 that's right is that when we do it <laughs> i think it's at one i think you're right one i think it's at one okay yeah did i say 1 30 today when i put the announcement out i didn't even see the announcement so i okay. i, I just I plucked 1. 30 out of the ether so that's probably just yeah. not right yeah i think it's at one o'clock um but now that i now that now that we've brought this up now i'm thinking is it at one let me just double check i think, I think, I think we've been doing it at one well and this is for, for you guys maybe you're not familiar this is our live show where it's a pretty unstructured um let's get together and talk about yeah it's at one one o'clock Boom. Um, <laughs> just saw your Paul Rudd. Didn't forget about this. Not me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is our time where we can just get together and talk about um, DMing, Dungeons and Dragons, Critical Role, Worlds Beyond. You know, sort of your favorite theories and thoughts, reactions, um, questions you might have about DMing. Uh, Will and I have both DM'd. We both love D and uh, We figure we're putting all this time and effort into a D and D channel. Why not have a time where we can kind of all just get together and hang out and chat? So. Uh, typical show is about 30 to 45 minutes. So yeah. grab some lunch and, and join us. We'll be live streaming here on YouTube. Yeah. It's, it's really just a hangout sesh. That's all it is. I, we just mm-hmm. talk about random stuff usually devolves into, but it's a good time. So yeah, come, come with any questions you got and, uh, yeah, just come, come chill this Friday with us tomorrow. Um, again, mm-hmm. that is at 1 PM central U S time for those of you that are in various places. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> another announcement is, well, first of all, join our discord. You know, we always like to plug that there will be a link in the description below. I actually need to check on that. I haven't checked on that in like months, <laughs> but like when I first put it in there, you know, you can say like never expire, never expire. but I right. still think yeah. they expire. Cause like, I don't I've, know. I've yeah. run into that in the past. Anyway, I'll make sure it's active, but there will be a link down in the description. It's the best place to come chat with us. You know, um, we love YouTube comments. Of course, we will respond to those um, when we can, but that's the best place to like actively engage. And not only with us, but with other people in our community, we got amazing folks in there and we got a lot of different little sections for different things to discuss. So come hang out, but I bring it up because this Sunday for our Sunday fun day watch party, <clears throat> it is Christmas Eve. And so we are going to be watching the night before Christmas. It doesn't get more perfect than that. We didn't even plan mm-hmm. it. Um, mm-hmm. but if you've been a part of the discord or I think I, I made a post on YouTube as well, you might've seen that we were trying to figure out what a good time for that would be. Cause obviously a lot of people are going to be busy on Christmas Eve. So we didn't know if our normal seven thirty PM time would be good. 
So the poll results are in, and here's what we're going to be doing. We are going to be having our showing at 10.30 a.m. on Christmas Eve, again, Central Time. Um, and so that's that's definitely for sure happening. We'll be watching the night before Christmas, but Blake and I were just talking about it. Um, and we may even do multiple showings throughout Christmas Eve because Blake and I both have different schedules that day. We know all of you do as well. Um, and we want everybody to be able to come hang out. So um, 10.30 a.m. for sure, but keep an eye out for extra showings if you can't make that one. And definitely let us know if that's something you'd be interested in as well because that'll help us figure out maybe what times to do it at. Um, anything that I've missed here? No, I think we're good. Perfect. Um, oh, uh, Worlds Beyond Number, we didn't forget about it. Uh, that yeah. is also on, ever since its last episode, I guess, t uh, almost two weeks ago, um, they all, they started their end of year hiatus. So there wasn't a new episode this week, um, but we will be releasing our discussion on the most recent episode, probably, mm -hmm. probably after Christmas at this point. Yeah. It'll probably still be an, it'll be next week still, but yeah, it'll, I guess Christmas is on Monday, yeah. I think. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be after Christmas, I think. So, yeah. Um, but def absolutely before the next episode comes out, but yeah, we didn't forget about it for our worlds beyond fans out there. Um, but with that being said, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> well, that was just the <laughs> final like right that's the last thing right um but so yeah let's... Like a few minutes uh and no, i'm just making a stupid joke continue <laughs> we like stupid jokes here though so mm -hmm. but yeah so let's let's get into it we're here to talk about critical role campaign three episode 80 today and um just like we always do we're gonna run through our recap of the episode first and we cut that out host it separately on youtube for your viewing convenience so if you find yourself on that video, but you want to see our full discussion, it'll be linked in the description box below. Um, but without further ado, Critical Role Campaign 3, Episode 80. Now, there's actually the title, there's actually some shenanigans around this. Um, it was originally Ooh, called Eve it. of the Red Moon, mm. um, but it is now called, and I... A test of Trust. Thank you. A Test of Trust. <clears throat> so... We pick back up um, for this episode at with Bell's Hells at the start of their third team building exercise. This one all about trust. So Nanamori has um, emitted the fog and transported them to this fey wild jungle uh, and essentially has told them that there's three ivory branches that are hidden around and they have to collect all three of them without and without breaking them or anything and return them to this central body of water, this this well. And she says, you know, there's there's beasts about, there's illusions, there's traps. But additionally, there are two doppelgangers that are going to replace two members of you. And their sole mission is to sabotage your mission. <clears throat> so Matt hands everybody a card. And on those cards are instructions, basically. And two of the cards are doppelganger cards. And they have, like, specific missions for the doppelgangers, as he, as he explains it. So he hands out the cards, everyone looks at their own card, and then essentially the game begins. So what follows is a ton of fun, peak D&D. &D. The players are giddy and anxious trying to figure out like who to trust. Um, <clears throat> but for the purposes of this recap, I'm going to kind of just breeze through the highlights of this section. Um, so various members of the party go looking for these ivory branches. Um, then we have some sets or excuse me, we have some traps that are set off and uh, essentially just perception checks are being made to look for the branches. Insight checks are being made between the players. Um, again, they're all like <laughs> they're all kind of like super giddy and like not not trusting anything anyone says. Um, it's a lot of fun, but <clears throat> Ashton actually manages to find the first ivory branch and we find out they have three hit points. And if they break, the team loses. So Ashton takes it back to the well, tries to throw it in, but is rebuked by like an invisible wall. So they figure out that they need to have all three and put them in together. So um, Imogen does try to use her mind reading to help in this challenge, but it, it's not working because that would be too easy. So. A lot of insight checks flying around and um, the players are actually texting Matt when this happens so that like they can say if they're using persuasion or deception and then Matt like announces the result to everybody else. <clears throat> a lot of fun. 
Um, at one point, a creature does dart out of the bushes and steals the branch from Ashton. Uh, but Orem is able to get it back with like an Indiana Jones seedling vine <laughs> whip. Um, uh, the FCG speaks with animals to look for hints. Uh, Fern speaks with plants to look for hints. Neither of those really pan out. Um, there are a little bit, there's a little bit of combat between some like Feywild vicious shrubbery and like a, an owl at one point. Um, Imogen does ultimately find the second branch and shortly after Chetney finds the third one. So distrust still flying around the table, but ultimately all of them kind of reconvene at the well. Um, and everyone, not everyone, but a lot of bells hells are like readying spells on each other. Like Fern's like, I'm going to hold a hold person, hold my action, hold person on Chetney. And yeah. a few Power of those works, go yeah. out. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but ultimately they're like, okay, like count of three, let's all do this. So they count down and all three throw their branches in. So no, no one betrayed anybody. And the three branches all swirl around in the water and, and rejoin into one big branch. And then mist once again, like fills the area. The party then wakes back up inside ligament manor, like having just drunk in the tea or whatever. And Maury's like, I hope you enjoyed the nap. So like all of this had happened like in like a dreamscape, if you will. And that's where we go to break on the first half. Great job, man. Um, yeah, coming back from the break, uh, there's a little bit of like party maintenance that needs to happen. Um, they've acquired three new items, uh, the monocle, the scarf, and the, the branch, like the coalesced branch maybe was the third item. I'm yeah, not sure. I yeah, I was actually going to ask you that too. Um, yeah, but I the, think the, so because every item had yeah. been like the item thus far. The three twigs kind of came together to make like a long branch, and essentially the party at this point is kind of figuring out who's going to take what, and then also figuring out attunement slots. Like I think FCG um, had was like maxed out on attunement slots, but wanted to take an item, so they were trying to figure out who like should the staff go back to Imogen, um, and they basically kind of figure all of that out. Uh, the other thing they talk about is um, there's kind of just a really nice um, kind of recap on the things that were shared in the honesty session. They expressed to Orm like, hey, I'm sorry you're so lonely. And just like, know that like we're your family. Like we're always here for you. And there's this funny line where Imogen's like, if you ever want to not feel lonely anymore, you know, just let me know. And then she's like, but not <laughs> like that, though. <laughs> to which Travis is like, I think we knew it wasn't like that, but thank you. <laughs> um and they actually, you know, the party came to their senses and they, to Ashton, were kind of like, hey, I think Imogen actually says like, hey, I, I kind of understand where you were coming from. And I'm sorry you didn't feel like you could be honest about your reasoning for wanting to take the shard. Um, bringing up the shard, they also talk about, you know, hey, I think it's actually Ashton who mentions like, hey, it, it was me, but it could have been anyone. Like, we're all a ticking time bomb. Uh, to which, um, in that conversation, um, you know, you have Ladna, who's really curious about the shard and really intrigued by the shard. Uh, and more importantly, speaking of the shard, they're like, hey, shouldn't somebody take this now? And going back to Fern, it's kind of like, hey, Fern, it feels like it's you. In fact, Grandma uh, Morgan is even like, I'm very excited to see what could happen with you taking the shard. Um, they decide to go out to the garden before doing this process of taking the shard. Uh, they do take a short rest to regain some hit points. And out in the shard, uh, Fern begins the process, just like we saw in, I think it was episode 78, I believe. Um, we see Fern putting on the harness and beginning to consume the shard. It's not as chaotic as when Ashton did it, in that Matt describes it as sort of like a gradually ramping up burning sensation. Uh, but it is very much like the rounds that Ashton went through of Fern taking fire damage and essentially trying to survive it. There's a number of things that happen. She casts Aura of Life on herself, which she is immediately going to lose with a natural one concentration fail on the first sign of damage. Uh, FCG is going to do Bonded Blessing. And actually, I don't know if this was a new ability or I just haven't noticed it before, but also in doing Bonded Blessing has a an ability called Shatter Vigor that allows damage to be taken from one person and given to someone else. And then for health to be transferred to the person who originally took damage 
So Fern is going to take quite a bit of damage, and FCG is going to use Shatter Vigor to make that damage go to Ashton, uh, and Fern actually be healed instead. Uh, Ashton also has given his ring uh, to uh, Fern, which allows her to take less fire damage. Um, but essentially, over the course of several rounds, she goes from taking 10 damage to 20 to 30, and I think the most she ever took was 41 points of damage, uh, barely surviving by 12 hit points. Physically, what's happening is the fire is like literally blowing out, destroying the garden around them. Uh, her hair is curling back as these flames sort of erupt from her. Uh, at one point, everyone takes 11 points of fire damage. And she's also getting visions of something primordial, presumably Raushan. At one point, she's in darkness and sees a towering figure of fire who looks down on her with almost like she's an ant. Uh, but also there's like a sense of sadness mixed with pride. Uh, and then there's a uh, essentially another vision um, that actually I can't remember exactly what happened in the final one. Um, but all that to say, Fern essentially ascends is the best way to describe it. She is consumed by fire and effectively gains this sort of fire primordial form to herself. Um, to which the party is like blown away. And also there's this cool detail of like, it's not just fire, but it's fire that like um, cascades off into like black smoke. And I think there may be there were even like black flames, very dark fern esque, by the way. Um, the party loves it. They're like, this is awesome. Um, let's have Ashton. Let's see what happens to Ashton. If they get too close to each other, let's have them kiss. And Ashton's <laughs> like, maybe we can just like shake hands. Yeah. They shake hands and Matt describes Ashton's arm like coming alight and sort of like charging up, or, like turning on, so to speak. Both of them get very big um, magic item cards or like mm. ability cards, yeah. uh, which they frustratingly don't read to the group. Um, so we don't know quite what happens. We know that Fern has some kind of fire form that she can turn on and off. And Ashton, that they have some kind of like mold with earth kind of ability, not, not shape earth, but like they can meld themselves into the earth in some way. Yeah. It seems. Um, and so they very, had like a earth elemental form, right? Yeah. Where they like, he, he, he grew like two feet or something mm. and it was like, it became very swole. It's <laughs> pretty much what it was. Um, so we've been talking a lot about the party needs big power ups and it seems like the two of them did. Uh, and the party decides, hey, I think we're ready to go on this recon mission. And that is where uh, the episode comes to a close. Episode number. Yeah, go ahead. I forgot like a massive part in my recap. So yeah. let me just add it here. No one was a doppelganger. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, so like that right. was the whole point of the test is that there weren't any doppelgangers and they just had to learn to trust each other. So no, I kind of left out think... that very important part. <laughs> Fern, they were pegged on Fern as being the doppelganger who, you know, Ashley Johnson just could not convince anyone she wasn't. And then yeah. I feel like Sam Regal, like, intentionally was feigning <laughs> being doppelganger-esque, yeah. um, which was really great. Oh, and an important detail about FCG, um, in doing the Shatter Vigor, uh, they're taking stress points and they actually go berserk. So when this whole thing with Fern ends, um, uh, Orem has to basically... Uh, push FCG away and keep FCG away before FCG is finally able to succeed on a wisdom saving throw uh, and come back to their their normal self. Mm. So um, that is everything that happened in episode 80, A Test of Trust. If you're watching just the recap, you can click the link below to get our full thoughts and theories and let us know your full thoughts and theories and reactions to the episode. Please, please. Well done. All right, my friend. I love something you said in the recap of this being like kind of classic D and D, and I really we've said that a lot lately, but I I really felt like that was the case. Just yeah. like the shenanigans and like the who can I trust? It was just all very funny. Yeah, such a <laughs> such a fun encounter. I guess if I mean I guess it's fair to call it that. More of a social encounter. Um, but yeah, Matt, this Matt especially. I mean, oh, this goes without saying, but Matt's an incredible DM. But he's really flexed that muscle to me um, creatively in these last couple of episodes with the blindfolded challenge and then with this really cool mm -hmm. doppelganger um, social encounter. And I know, um, again, we uh, we watch all the episodes uh, live with all you guys in our Discord each week. Um, 
that's another reason to join. But uh, a lot of people actually were were guessing that maybe no one was a doppelganger. Um, yeah, which I thought that was I thought that was really cool. Um, a great a great a great twist on that. Um, like I would love to do that to my players, like in a game. Um, but I, I love how committed Matt was like, <clears throat> you know, he could have, he could have done that same thing and been way lazier about it, but like going through mm-hmm. to make the cards and explain that like two of these are this and nobody look at each other's and make sure you text me and stuff. Like I just, I loved the commitment. Um, mm-hmm. cause I think they were, I, th- I think they started speculating <clears throat> toward the end when like nothing, like no big betrayal had happened yet. But for the most part, I don't think that even crossed their mind until like later yeah. in the in the scenario. Um, yeah, there was a point where Laura Bailey said something like, what if it's nobody? And then kind of abandoned that thought when Orem, you know, Liam sitting next to her suddenly became very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> it, so. was, it was so fun just watching them all like turn on each other. And uh, Marisha especially was hilarious just because like she made it known like she was like terrible at these types of games. Like yeah, everyone right. always knew when it was her and she just like started dying laughing at a couple points. And I'm yeah. like, Oh my gosh, is it Marissa? Or is this like 4d chess where she's just trying to make them think you it's know, her and, or something. But Travis Willingham really thought he had Ashley Johnson pegged because Ashley was like, it's not me. And he was like, stop it, Ashley. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, speaking of stop it, we had a Sam Regal stop it. We did sneeze this up. We're breaking the meta a little, a little bit. bit of revenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love this is just like a continual thing. <laughs> yeah. It's so. a bit, it's a bit we've, um, I was actually wondering, was it, was it this episode where Sam's ad bit, did you see it at the start of the app? I didn't see it. I can't remember if it was this, this is, this is irrelevant. Um, but cause it might not have been this episode, but he was doing like a lie detector and, um, they like lie like they started chanting lie and i was like is this the birth of a bit is this going to be a new thing they do every time yeah um but anyway yeah i uh just the sneeze thing made me think of that um but yeah just so much fun man like <clears throat> peak D D. like to, to circle us back to the start here yeah. um just you know you could tell how much fun they were having so always a great time and then like you so know- just jam-packed fun first half and then finally getting some answers with these shards um in the second yeah. half that was super cool so not to not to gloss over if there's anything else yeah. about the doppelganger stuff you wanted to talk well, about. well all i was gonna say is like i know for me as a dm sometimes i feel like you know mac matt is i said max <laughs> max, max mercer <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you know lose your lose your followers on youtube and you know, five seconds. <laughs> um, he keeps referring to him as Max Murfer, or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> anyway, it's his um, evil doppelganger name. <laughs> I I know sometimes I feel like this sense of, you know, when I explain, you know, Matt, Matt's such a, a wordsmith in really paints a canvas in scene setting. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Bren, Brennan does a great job with that too. And I know sometimes I with my players i'm kind of like yeah you walk into a tavern and it it's a tavern (laughs) you know and so i think i think for me there's sometimes this tension around like if you're going to give your players a great session you have to be deliberate and elaborate and you know really paint the canvas and at the end of the day you know what gives your players a great experience is i mean think about what they did where it was the shenanigans around i think they called it werewolf was the version they're used to but um I know it as like mafia or, you know, things like that, but yeah. Among you know, us. Fun, yeah. Among us. Right. Fun ways for your players to engage with each other. Like you really don't like Matt at that point, you move away from being like the wordsmith and instead just sort of like the party ref of like, okay, text me, like keeping mm-hmm. things in check. And I think that's just, that's just a sign of a great session. You know, when the DM is talking less and the players yeah. are more engaged, like, that's 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 when good work is being done i think yeah a hundred percent agreed um totally and i think we we briefly talked about this in our last episode too maybe but like to your point like you don't have to be the elaborate wordsmith or the great voice actor like the the Mm -hmm. best sessions are like you just are the best moments a lot of the time um are those moments where the dm's just not doing anything you know because like the players are just fully invested in going at it so yeah, you don't you don't have to be Matt Mercer, y'all. Um, and he himself 
has said that and is is proving that in these in these sequences he's been putting out in these last couple episodes. So yeah, yeah. totally cosine on that. Um, cosine <clears throat> tangent. Sign. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, moving on to the back half. Um, bro, I've mentioned this before. It is my absolute pet peeve when the card does not get read. <laughs> where I'm just like, I want, I want to freaking know. What does yeah. it say? They seemed jazzed about it, and I, I, and honestly, Ashton getting a card makes it whole for me. On like my annoyance with the previous episodes, and like, uh, you know, mm. um, and also the party kind of extending an olive branch to him a little bit. Like it, it seems like it kind of came back together a little bit. Yeah. I really appreciated that. Um, but also, yeah, him getting something, I just kind of felt like, okay, I. I feel I feel better about this now. Yeah. Um, and Fern seems really jacked about hers too. I think uh Laura Bailey was like reading over their shoulders, and I think she was even said, like, it's crazy, guys. It's really cool. So yeah, I <clears throat> I'm with you. Like, we just we want to know those cards. And so like I would say for for big things like this, that typically is the trend where they don't read it. Um typically not even like the other players at the table getting to know, like you said, Laura kind of read over her shoulder, but I think aside from like those people right there, they didn't like read, like um, they didn't share it. I don't think, did they to the no, other cast? Cause <clears throat> yeah. So I think, cause they want to kind of like showcase like mm-hmm. that, that flair when the time comes. Um, but Matt, I think eventually we'll get it. Um, if not, once after it's used maybe at the end of the campaign but matt's usually pretty good about like tweeting mm-hmm. it out being like hey by the way here was this um and stuff like that uh but yeah s- same thing happened like with with vestiges in campaign one like they weren't immediately like read aloud and revealed when they mm-hmm. were found um but yeah right there with you and yeah i i mean i expected ash ashton to get something like even though the when he, when they tried to get both shards that failed, you know, we still were wondering about like, well, Ashton's, even though they have a shard, like that seemingly is going to awaken or something. Um, mm-hmm. So especially once Ashley, like literally got that card, I was like, Oh, I bet, I bet Ashton's is coming too. But I was, I didn't know if it would be as easy as like, they just have to touch, which, so it's cool. They kind of both happened at the same time for them. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, those things were massive and I guess, and I haven't even like gone back and looked at this, so you might have to correct me, but from what I recall, what we do know, what we gleaned <clears throat> was that she, they both have like a form, I think, where they can like transform for lack of a better word into like a primordial form. Um, and she has like fire cascading off of her. But she can choose if it hurts you, right? Like, because allies, if she yeah, wants, can touch like her, mm-hmm. I think. Um, mm-hmm. So it seems like she's got, like, just an AoE. Maybe yeah. not AoE. Maybe, like, you do have to be touching. But thorns damage, if you will. Um, <clears throat> and then Ashton, we know, can... I, I wish... Earth Glide? There's, there's some name for it. But Is that what it was? Like, the melding into the earth thing? Yeah. So, I, it might not be called Earth Glide, but it's something like that in 5e, where essentially you can, like, swim uh, in earth. So, like, like earth oh, elementals cool. have the same ability. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. That makes sense, then. Um, but I think that's, those were, like, like, the only two things we learned. Yeah. I think that's in... in um, like in the trend of his character too, that which is high movement, like high mobility. Like it seems like it's an additional boon to that. There was some comment yeah. about like a negative though, like a penalty yes. or like a damage or something to Ashton. Um, but Matt didn't to clarify. Both of them. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, I think so. Obviously, I don't know. So take this with a massive grain of salt. But for whatever reason, when Matt said that, the context I was getting from that was like. So you can transform into this amazing thing, but like, and you're going to be great for 10 minutes or whatever the the duration is. But then once that's over, there's going to be like some sort of like Hmm. penalty. So the way I looked at it was like the haste spell. Like when you get haste, you get all those bonuses, but when it falls off, you're like stunned for a minute or whatever. Yeah. Right. I, my guess is it's something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, That does make sense. But I, but I do think it was both of them and not just Ashton, but I could be wrong. 
Well, re regardless, I mean, we've talked a lot about the um, the power gap between what seems to be the big bad evil lewdness, mm -hmm. may or may not be. Um, that we did poll in our live stream, we did ask people what they thought, and people voted that it would be lewdness with the second runner up. I think was a close tie between Adahan and uh, um, Liliana, mm. um, which I just forgot an important detail. As I was giving the recap, there was a detail I was about to say, and then I forgot it. And then I kept trying, like, as I was talking, I was trying to remember what the detail was. And yeah. I was like, what was it that I was going to say? And it was um, Imogen, by the way, saying, like, hey, you guys good if I give in? <laughs> you know, give in to this thing? <laughs> um, which, you know, continues to, like, assert this, like, sort of half-joking theory I have that the players are the baddies. <laughs> but, um all that, but it's not not the point of what I'm saying though is um, what I'm saying is this power gap that's present. Mm -hmm. You know, they really needed. I feel like big swings of power ups, and it feels like they got two really big ones. Yeah, totally, totally. And I'm <clears throat> and we okay. I don't want to like tangent us too far here, but we we we're going to the moon. Like that's um, mm. I don't know maybe. Doesn't I don't want to do it right here, but maybe we could talk a little bit about the episode title thing. Uh, it's just reminding me of it. But in any case, we're going to the moon very soon, but it's supposed to be a scouting mission, right? So mm -hmm. it may not be the end game trip mm -hmm. to the moon, but it could be because who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I bring all this up because Fern and Ashton got a really big power up. And I don't think it's a situation where everyone in Bell's Hells has to have something like that. But... I am wondering if if there are more power ups to be had before that final big bad encounter happens. Now, I'm, that's, I don't think there's a primordial short out, shard out there for everybody, but I do think there are other things that they mm -hmm. could individually utilize the harness for, like mm -hmm. a boost of some sort. Um, so I'm still curious if if that's in the in the in the in the stars well, for this campaign yeah, or if, the, if this is it, like this is the final yeah. big boost. I mean, the, the, I feel like the lore reasons are there for there to be significant power-ups. Um, Ladna has Delilah who's sort of craving um, an upgrade mm -hmm. of some mm -hmm. kind um, and seemingly wants to empower Ladna to fight against Ludus and Prothos, assuming honesty there mm -hmm. that, you know, sort of trying to protect, um, uh, the whispered one um we have chetney with his wolf form and which which seemingly is affected by ruidus flares and they're actually going to ruidus mm. so i'm curious if that will be a detail we have fcg with like this power core and like sort of this unawakened i don't say unawakened but like there, there's like a power core of deep energy uh within them uh and then i can't think of anything for orum but i mean that's three people right there oh yeah. imogen talking about giving in to oh, right. the Brutus power. So, I mean, <clears throat> right. I think the more reasons are there if Matt wants to create more power-ups. Yeah, and, and Imogen especially, because we even had, and it was obviously kind of story-driven, but there was even that moment in the big fight with Odahan where it was like, give in, Imogen, and she did, and she leveled the three city blocks or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So, like, the, the precedent for that is there for her to have a, a, a power-up in that way. Um, and FCG, I agree too. Like, not that, not that FCG, like remembering everything would in and of itself be a power up, but that seems like a prime kind of like story thread to, to like massage for that. If that's what was going to happen, because that's like FCG's whole thing is like finding their purpose and trying to remember like all these, this time from the past that they can't remember. So I could see like, if there's space for it, some sort of plot thread there where like, by whatever means it comes from, Devexian or, or whatever, FCG like remembers everything and is getting some sort of power up. Um, not because they remembered again, but just in that same story thread. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but like, <clears throat> and I guess to circle back here, obviously we don't know, but what is your, what is your gut instinct on like, will there be time for kind of the, the power up arc or is this probably it i think this is it yeah. I, I mean it's not to say that i think i think i can say it's it but also say there could be more after ruidus um 
you know, maybe the moon splits open and Pradathos is on Exandria and they have to go like, let's go to, you know, wherever. <laughs> um, but I, I feel like if you really think about it, this arc has been very long of going to the Shattered Teeth, um, back to Whitestone, now the Feywild. It, it just feels like it's time, I guess. Um, I think any more interruptions would be uh, pretty detrimental to the overall story. Not that, I mean, in the day they're playing D and D. It's like, what do we, what do we want to do today? Kind of, th- kind of thing. But I think also they're, you know, Matt surely has like a sense of like where sort of the story points that can happen, where there's opportunities for that. So, um, I think any other power ups that could happen will be coincidental, and they'll happen um, in line with like their either journey to Ruidus or on Ruidus itself. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, And I guess, I guess it rolls back to the previous question of, is this trip to the moon, like the final countdown? The final countdown. Or could there be, you know, more arcs after this? Um, Which I, I think it's so tough. It's, it's a big question we've been wrestling with the entire campaign, really. Like, will this happen? Like, will Pradathos be released and, and get the gods? And is that, like, is that wiping the slate clean or, or setting up for, like, a new era? And that's both, like, meta and in-game. Um, which I think... <clears throat> I actually think it would be kind of really cool if Pradathos does get out. Because uh, one of the things we talked about at some point in one of these episodes was um, I can't, I I guess it was a Vontravir maybe who was talking about this saying that like what happens if it, if he gets out is like the light of the gods like Mm -hmm. rushes away and Pradathos rushes after them. So again, Mm -hmm. not that that is what would happen, but if that did happen that he gets out, the gods run away because they're terrified and, and he chases them. That's a really cool setting i think because that doesn't mean all the gods are gonna die but it kind of means we're on our own for at least a bit some gods might come back like who knows what could happen but we now know that there are at least one party on exandria which that means there's definitely more meaning the unseely court that is like primed and ready to take advantage of that situation so how many mm-hmm. other groups are similarly primed and ready to take advantage of that situation so i could see like a really cool like storyline being Pradathos is out, but like he left. So we're like, we don't have to deal with that right now. What we have to deal with right now is, uh, Suramar or whatever his name was. Um, and that, that Suramar is from heroes. Yeah. Of my magic three, uh, Salmon. Well, uh, wow. It's from world of Warcraft. Suramar is the, uh, uh well, uh, isn't elf. it also from, uh, might and magic. I mean, there's like a blue hero. Yeah, there is. Um, maybe it's not Suramar though. It probably oh, wow. is from wow. Or it is from um, Yeah, from a uh, Legion. But um yeah, seminar. There we go. Yeah. So like I think that could be again, may, probably won't happen that way. But if it if it did, then I could see one, that's some really cool plot lines that could come up. And it kind of paves the way for like Bell's Hell's not fighting a god eater right now, which how are they gonna do that anyway? Um, But then there could maybe be some space for like some of these other power ups as we're navigating like Mm -hmm. the godless vacuum of Exandria. Um, That was a that was a big ramble. So I don't. Yeah, I think the story I think the story ends with Ludinus and not Pradathos, whether Pradathos gets freed or not. I feel like the story ends with Ludinus like he has been the central villain. Um, He's an incredibly compelling villain. Um, you know, it's a villain that's interesting when you think about it being the villain in the sense of, you know, centuries old wizard of like incredible strength, you know, it's just, it's crazy to kind of process it. Um, and I, I, I like what you're saying. I mean, you know, you think about campaign settings and what better campaign setting than, you know, the typical, um, the gods have fled. You know, it's just us. There's all these forces that are vying for power. I mean, that yeah. creates a lot of really interesting storylines. And and frankly, when we think about long term for Critical Role, you know, I think Travis has said they kind of want to have the MCU version for CR. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you think about all the potential one shots and 
it, it just really opens up the canvas, I yeah. guess, just to kind of see like what story do we want to tell and what's, you know, I mean, think about a storyline of like the gods have fled, but there's one God who is hiding on Exandria and, you know, has been humbled or, you know, is, I don't know, like, it's, I think of like, uh, Togepi from Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> like they have to protect this, you know, entity, this, this, you know, shard of a God or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. But I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of interesting yeah. storylines, I think around it. And I do, I do agree that Ludinus is, is the baddie. Um, mm-hmm. So may, like maybe that, that if that happens, maybe it would be setting the stage for campaign four. Like that would be the, the set right. dressing for campaign four to step into and not necessarily to be addressed here. Um, which how long are the breaks typically between campaigns? I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, they always feel really long, but they're probably not that long. And cause they, cause they do stuff between like they typically do like, well, CR is a lot different of a beast now since they have things like EXU and like Candela Obscura. So like maybe those things would slot in, but like typically they have like one shots and stuff, but I want to say it's like at least a few months, like maybe like a quarter of the year, like a, like a three month. It's pretty short. Yeah. It might, I mean, it might be six months for all I know, but I don't think it's that long. Yeah. Okay. The only time like there was like the really long break was when COVID happened and that wasn't even like a, yeah between campaign situation um so yeah i don't know i'm actually really i mean i don't want campaign three to end yet but i am kind of interested to see what the break between campaigns looks like now that we have Mm. things like exu and how are you liking uh i I feel like we are i don't want to say we're towards the end of campaign three where it definitely feels like we're on the back foot or the back part of it Mm -hmm, um i saw a thread uh, that was put up on the cr subreddit on you know how would you rank the uh mm. cr campaigns and uh, you know i it's probably you're probably not ready to answer that question but um i would be curious you know how are you feeling about the campaign as a whole you know now that it seems like we're sort of heading towards the not finale but maybe like the final setting like where the last batch of episodes could happen um what's your as someone who's seen every cr episode there is what's your take i, I love c3 I've I've had a great time start to finish. Um I I feel I've I've thought about making a video on this because C3 seems to get a bad rap with certain I sex. see a lot of criticism. Yeah, like a lot of people it. are like, "Oh man, Crook Roll sucks now." Like and <clears throat> I don't know where that's coming from. I have a personal like kind of theory where whatever your first campaign you see is is your favorite and like mm-hmm. the next one is disappointing because of that. Like yeah. I know a lot of people that started in campaign two sat like didn't like campaign three as much. And to me, mm-hmm. I think it's because like they haven't let go of campaign two. Not to not to psychoanalyze yeah. large swaths of well, people. Isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't that like a trope though? Like a cliche, like yeah. whatever you first experience, like yeah. you know, you get down the road and you're like, well, nothing was as good as the original. And like totally. So every new group says that about their original yeah. interaction. Totally. And I, so I think, I think this just people aren't giving it like, and of course there are people out there that just aren't going to like C3. Like that's, <clears throat> that's fine. That of course exists, but I at least think for some people it's that they're like, Oh, this isn't the thing I fell in. It's not exactly the thing I fell in love with. So I don't like it. You know what I mean? Like mm. all three campaigns have been very different in terms of like hmm. feel. Um, and I, I can't answer that question to your, your original question of like ranking them. I think right. I would need to wait for C3 to end, but I will say just like those people I was just talking about, I think critical run campaign one will probably always be my favorite because that was my first one. Um, mm. But that doesn't prevent me from enjoying the next ones. Like campaign two was amazing and I've loved campaign mm-hmm. three so far, but like if you made me pick, there's just something special about that first one, you know, cause that's where you discovered it and that's where you, first got into it um i won't say it's impossible for something to maybe be like oh this is even better than campaign one because like again like i'm not even saying that like in a vacuum campaign one is the best for like these concrete reasons it's more of just a nostalgia is what would put it over the edge for me um but yeah um i think a lot of people have have given campaign three an unfair like, they just haven't given it a fair shot 
and the, I'm ba- solely judging this based off like comments that I've seen on our videos or on other critical role videos where like, I mean, honestly, the people that are making them, I don't even think are like truly CR fans. Cause they're like saying like hateful stuff and being like, I don't, I don't even want to like give them the spotlight, but there's a few I'm thinking of right now. And I know like you've seen them and we've talked about them sometimes, but being like, man, critical role is all about like, being PC, this is not how they said it, but like being PC and like uh, being like, you know, woke and stuff. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like that, like they've always been consistent on their, their yeah, views I'm, on those things. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty apolitical in general, but you know, I think there's a difference between a, an organization that is virtue signaling, you know, that yeah. like doesn't have a history of whatever it is they're purporting to represent. And then an organization like critical role that through and through, you know, since they were tiny, you know, have continued to have consistent values. So, um, uh, separate from like the more political stuff, I, I will say that, and this is, I think this is also just kind of Reddit. And then this is, I guess, by the way, this is kind of just like a random tangent. We're even in this conversation because <laughs> it's less about the episode, but, um, this may be like a greater thing about Reddit in general. Cause I have noticed that Reddit, it, and this is very feels craft. It feels like Reddit has become, significantly exponentially more toxic um Mm -hmm. in the last year even than i remember it um being on it originally several years ago um and it on that note there are people who are not only is cr not their cup of tea they are very mad about it Mm -hmm. and like very angry about it um i don't know i think that's just a sign you need to take a break i guess um but Anyway, from like a random dude who's just like been watching. This is my first campaign. Uh, I've had a great time. I love the characters. <laughs> I love the actors. Um, you've given me a hard time about, you know, everyone's my favorite character. And everyone really is. Like, yeah. I truly love, I truly love every character on the team. I think they're all so brilliantly created. And they play together so well. Um, so anytime one of them takes the spotlight, I'm ready for it. Like, I enjoy it rather than being like, oh, stop talking and go to yeah. the next person. Like, I'm just having a great time. Yeah, so. agreed. I've I've loved campaign three. Um, and I actually this is funny that we brought this up because I actually had this thought about how like the first one you watch is is like your favorite. And then and again, not, not to say this is a bad thing. It's a natural thing that maybe when you first experience the next one there's a kind of like, Oh, like it's not, it's not that, Mm. you know, I'm curious if you're going to have that at all in campaign four. I think my only, my only criticism for campaign three would be, um, it feels like, and I, and I think, I think if I can rag on you a little bit, I think this is a little bit of your DM style too. Uh There are some very long storylines that take quite a while for their payoff. (laughs) Um, in the sense of, you know, Matt is very much, it seems like enjoys like the very subtle notes that Mm -hmm. build up and pay off 30 episodes from now. Yeah. And I will say I've enjoyed worlds beyond because it feels like that the, that cadence has been more like in a 10 to 12 episode, um, rhythm. Um, so, you know, that's, that's me, I guess. Um, (laughs) I, I can but. see that. I mean, that's that's fair. And that that's definitely true of me because this I learned from watching you, dad. Like, you know, I watch <laughs> I watch Matt Mercer. So and like I just I love like like long sprawling epics, yeah. you know, but unfortunately for uh, me, like the campaign doesn't get to run as long as Critical Role. So like, you know, I have all these cool ideas, yeah. but then we yeah. never got to see the payoff. Um, right. But yeah, that's fair. And I'm not that not that you'll change your mind on it, but I wonder if like when these moments happen, are they that much sweeter? Because like you did like the journey, not just because like length makes it better, but I think as long as like the journey is good the whole time, then perhaps it's a bit sweeter. We talked about it too, with um, the gap immediately after the Apogee Solstice episode, where we had the two parties and how there came a point where it kind of just felt like, you know, let's, let's get this going a little bit. Um, and I think one of us said in retrospect, we would look back on it a bit more positively. Um, it's like, you know, filler is never really that bad. 
like once you're past the filler and you look back and not even so much that this was necessarily filler um it wasn't interrupting uh interrupting is too harsh um it, it wasn't even a side quest either i mean it's just what happened i guess but um you know i think you may be right in that once the campaign's said and done and all over you know the things that i i'm like oh man another you know another interruption like let's let's see where this is going to go mm-hmm. if i'll look back much more positively uh, and that's a very slight criticism. It doesn't really bother me other than just it's not it's not my style as a DM. It's not my preference as a player, which that's really where the conversation ends. I mean, clearly, clearly Matt, Matt's players have an awesome time and that's that's really all that matters. So it doesn't yeah. even really matter what I think about it. So. And there's not that this is worth diving into right now, but obviously we're we're talking about these things from like a, a story standpoint you know like you use the word filler and um like in like an anime or something that's when like they just spend three episodes doing some nonsense you're like don't get back to the main plot and i think that is a a fair word to use but it's not like a one-to-one comparison because this isn't like a scripted show so it's not like they you know well and what they're doing is relevant to them as the players like it right it makes sense why they're doing it, which is why I don't really like the filler word. Right. Um, and I, I, I can't quite find the right word that means what I'm saying without like degrading the reason for why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. And I was, I was just going to say that like, um, because it's, it is like impossible to compare. It might be impossible to find that right word. But like, mm. if you think about it is like, slightly above the table just all the things going on like they got to bring in all these guest stars people they've been wanting to play with um and you know the various of them got to like i don't know i'm not gonna say take vacation because who knows what they did they're all very busy but maybe they took a vacation or maybe they had to work on another project like there's all these other Mm -hmm. things that are at play um Mm -hmm. that i think make those moments happen and um i neither of us disliked those moments I, i actually i think both of us really enjoyed those moments but there was a time toward the end of the first group where Mm -hmm. i I know a lot of people were getting like okay like you know and i think again i don't don't, want to like dive all into this but some of that is expectation setting at the start right um anyway all i'll say is that already for me like i'm looking back at that as like an amazing time like it was so cool to see emily axford and utkarsh and abria and christian like that was just a really fun time in the campaign um, they were great guest stars for yeah. sure um I, how did we get here what were we even talking about <laughs> i was just i was just asking you about your thoughts on oh CO3 yeah that's right and, that's right or campaign three excuse me um so. but yeah i mean to to circle all the way back around special place in my heart for campaign one. Cause that's where, that's where I started, but there it's like my children, you know, like you can't make me pick a favorite. <laughs> that, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I have two kids and I have a favorite, so oh. I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, you said it. <laughs> clip it. We'll show it to them <laughs> 16 years from now. Okay. So presumably next episode uh, is tonight. They, Ooh. They will be maybe beginning this mission, at least heading to the excavation site, I would presume. Well, um, okay, not to cut you off, but this is a good... Yeah. Finish your thought first. I, I, I was just kind of keeping the conversation going. Okay. So. Well, I, I wanted to circle back to the episode title shenanigans because it kind of plays right. into this. So for those of you right. that, didn't, that didn't see this, when they first put out the episode on Monday onto YouTube... They were calling it Eve of the Red Moon, Um, which makes sense, right? Because we know they're headed to the moon. So maybe this was the last night of things before they do that. But then they changed the episode title uh, on Tuesday, the next day. They changed it to a a test of trust. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like that, right? So people are wondering, okay, did they just decide to change the title for whatever reason? Or... Was that is Eve of the Red Moon this week's title? Since they obviously pre-record them, so they probably would have mm-hmm. known this week's title. Um, I think that I don't know why they would change a title just to change the title. Like, you know. So for my money, Eve of the Red Moon is probably tonight's episode title, right? Which, if so, that probably means we're not going yet. There's another mm-hmm. full episode of 
not yet on the moon. Um, yeah. So I, I bring all that up to lead into what you're saying about tonight's episode that I'm curious if, 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 if we indeed do not go to the moon yet, what, what is a, there a full episode worth to kind of go over now? It could, I mean, there's a million things, obviously we know how long they like to plan things. Like it could be a full episode of planning. Um, could be some more RP cause they did, they did briefly touch on some of the, the things revealed in that it wasn't the test of trust, the test of honesty, I guess. But I personally would kind of really enjoy some more diving into that, like more talking about Chetney's backstory or, you know, Orem and yada, yada, yada. Um, or could there potentially be any space for maybe a little power up like we were talking about if we have a full episode before we go? I don't think we're going anywhere. Um, so it would have to be something that could like happen relatively contained to where we are. But um, anyways, yeah. I mean, it could be they go to the excavation site and they don't quite go to Rude as true, well. True, true. Um, I don't know. I feel like if they didn't do anything, it would just only reassert my criticism of... <laughs> You know, there's just there's just always something that interrupts the flow. Um, so I, I would have a hard time envisioning a whole episode of them not going yet uh, without there being like a compelling, you know, th there would have to be a compelling reason for them not to go. Like maybe uh, the Sorrow Lord Zithuda shows up or mm. something like this is my chance to get Fern. Mm. Um, I could see something like that. That wouldn't bother me. But like a, a full like RP talk about it kind of episode, I would have, I'd have a hard time. Um, I'd have a hard time seeing that out, like seeing what could take up the context for the episode, but they could also, it could also be an episode where they get attacked by the Ruby Vanguard. Um, yeah. Cause Travis <clears throat> or Chatney rather um, looked around for any kind of scrying orbs when, before they did the ritual. Mm -hmm. So, Ludinus is aware of them. Um, so, I mean, something like that could be the case. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even if it is Eve of the Red Moon, like you said, maybe it's just because they don't actually get there yet, which that would make for a good, like, cliffhanger place to stop of, like, mm -hmm. we we go up the Ruby Bridge and the episode ends. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly could see a long plan session. I mean, that's their bread and butter. So, like, you know, I could see... Even if, if nothing happens, I could see the entire episode consisting of plotting out what they actually want to do and then maybe going to the excavation site. And maybe there is like some combat with the the Rylora or whoever is, is guarding mm -hmm. it, right? And so maybe that's like there's a combat session and then boom, episode ends. We have not yet arrived. I think that's most like, not that like it's exactly that, but I think that's most likely what's going to happen this episode and not like... Oh, we got to go back to Eos to, uh, you know, talk to Professor Sumal or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, but it Eve of the Red Moon is an episode title that was junking around somewhere for some reason. So at the very least, I think we have one more episode before we're on Ruidus, Um which is exciting. It'll be really interesting to see what actually happens up there. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll <laughs> don't wait long. I mean, episodes tonight, which, you know, thank you, though, those of you, by the way, who tune into our episodes when they get dropped the day of. 90% um, of the time, it's my fault because, you know, it's just hard to find time sometimes to watch the app. And I was out of town this last weekend doing my other other family's uh, Christmas. So um, what else, my friend? I mean, I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, okay. Yeah. I guess let us know what you guys thought of the episode and your theories on really the future of the campaign and maybe even more specifically what you think is going to happen with Ashton and Fern. Um, that makes it sound like I'm shipping them, which I'm not against. Um, um, but yeah, you know, they're power ups, I guess. Yeah. So, and then don't forget our live stream tomorrow um, at one o'clock central and then our, night before Christmas on Sunday at 1030 AM central time as well. That's right. And tonight we will be having our campaign three watch right. party at, um, normal critical role time, whatever that is for you. Yeah. So again, just and, I, Discord. and I think I will be there for that by the way, cause my raid has been nerfed significantly. Um, so should be, 
much easier to autopilot it. Oh, nice. Well, heck yeah, man. So, yeah. But yeah. Come, uh, come hang out with us tonight, tomorrow and Sunday. Yeah. Just spend your whole life with us. That's right. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I will say, um, one big part about our live, if you're still watching this video, one big part about our live stream is we take a lot of questions and just read off a lot of comments from you guys. So if you want to drop any of those comments or questions in advance, you can go to the community tab on our channel. We have a post that's up about the um, live stream tomorrow. So feel to drop, feel free to drop any questions or comments there. Uh, and then also in the Discord, um, you can uh, tag us with a question or comment as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, so y'all please come through and um yeah, happy happy holidays, Merry Christmas. This is probably I mean, you'll see us tomorrow if you come to the live stream and stuff. This right. will be our last podcast episode before those things happen. So yeah, hope you guys all have a great time and uh happy new year as well if this is the last one before that, but that's probably not. We'll have worlds beyond, I think, yeah. before then. So I but. take back my happy new year. Yeah. <laughs> you filthy animal. <laughs> All right, y'all. We appreciate you. Yeah. See ya. Until next time.